Guides here, buddy, another down and dirty guide. Today we'll be taking a gander at Open Broadcaster Software, or just OBS for short. This totally free and open source application is just the thing you've been looking for when it comes to your streaming and recording needs. So first things first, head over to the OBS site, link in the description below. Simply download the latest version of the application and then load it on up. We'll be needing a game to test with, so start up a favorite game of yours as well. It'll be easier to do the initial setup on a lower resolution, so I highly recommend adjusting your game's video settings to something like 1280x720 and put it in window mode to make it that much easier. So in OBS, let's right click the sources box, mouse over add, and then click game capture. You can name it whatever you want and then hit OK. A new window will pop up and you'll be given a drop down with a few options to choose from. Let's go ahead and choose the game I loaded up earlier and then hit OK. The new source should be now listed in the sources box. If we click the preview stream button, we can now see the game. Or if it was actually a good game, we would be able to see it. In some cases, if you're not actually playing the game you want to stream, it might not show up in the preview until you click the game. If it still doesn't appear like it's not appearing here, we'll actually have to set up a window capture instead, but more on that in a moment. Just to show you how the game capture looks, I'm going to start the preview here, right click the source, choose a different game, and if I click the preview again, you now can see a game in the preview area. Now let's go over our window capture source. This method of capturing your game is sometimes more reliable, but tends to be a bit more of a CPU hog. Go ahead and right click some of the empty space in the sources box again, and this time, let's add a window capture source. It looks slightly the same as the game capture option, but with a few more options. We'll leave most everything at default, and from the drop down, I'm going to choose the game that didn't work before. If we click OK and preview the stream now, the game finally shows up. While we're previewing or really streaming, we can now edit the objects in the scene. Click the Edit Scene button, and some red squares will appear in the corners of the preview area. If we click and drag them, we can adjust the amount of screen space the game takes up. Letting go of the red boxes, we can now click inside the object and drag it around. You'll also notice that our other game is still playing in the background. OBS lets you have multiple sources running at the same time, and they'll be layered from top to bottom based on their ordering in the sources box. If I right click the game capture source, then mouse over order, I have the options to move it up or down on the list, and even move it straight to the top or bottom. If I move it up in the order, it's now on top of the other game. Before we go over streaming settings, let's make one final touch. Right click the sources box, and choose to add a video capture device. You have a bunch of settings here you can mess with, including chroma key, which I can go over in another tutorial, but essentially you would use this source if you wanted to add a capture device like your webcam. Stop the preview, and let's head over into our settings area by clicking the settings button. Click the encoding option in the left side, and you'll be presented with some crazy settings. To make sense of them, head back on over to the OBS main page, and under help, we have a link to the estimator. This little tool gives you some baseline settings to work with. Click the drop downs to choose your approximate hardware, game type, and resolution. And if you don't know your maximum upload speed, use speedtest.net like it suggests you to. Once all your settings are in, click the recommend settings button. The recommendations will appear on the right side. Head back over into OBS and set up your encoding settings according to the recommendations you got earlier. As you stream or record, you'll be able to tweak these settings later to suit both your hardware and internet speed. For instance, it's generally fine to run 2000 kilobits if you're streaming at 1280x720 resolution. Once you've set up your encoding settings, let's set up our streaming settings. For the purpose of this video, we'll be using Twitch.tv as our example streaming service. Choose a server that's close to where you live, and now the slightly tricky part. We'll need our stream key. Go back to your internet browser and go to twitch.tv slash broadcast, link in the description below. You'll need to have an account with Twitch.tv, and once you're signed in, you can click the Show Key button to reveal your key. Then go ahead and copy it. Anyone with this key can broadcast on your channel, so don't share it with anyone. Back in OBS, paste the Stream Key into the field. If you want to save your stream locally while streaming online and think your computer can handle it, check on the Save to File option, and then pick somewhere to save the file. Once you're all set up with that, click the Audio option on the left side. I don't generally find the window default options for audio and microphone to be reliable, so I highly recommend manually choosing your microphone audio device from the dropdown. In another guide, I might go over some of the more advanced settings here, but we'll leave this streaming setup as it is for now. On the left side, let's go ahead and pick the general option again. 
and let's give this profile a name. I'll call it streaming and then click add. Now our streaming profile is all set up. If you want to set up OBS for recording footage and not streaming, highlight the profile field and make a new profile called local recording and then click add. Go over into your coding settings and since you're just recording the footage to your computer, you no longer have to worry about the internet upload speed. So I highly recommend upping the maximum bitrate. My personal preferences are around 4000 for 720p resolution and 5000 to 6000 for 1080p resolution. Once you've set up the max bitrate, head into the broadcast settings option. From the mode dropdown, choose file output only, then click apply. Your local recording is now all set up. Now whenever you want to switch between streaming and local recording, you can simply go into your general settings area and choose the relevant profile. Click OK to get out of the settings area, and now when you click start streaming, you'll begin streaming to your favorite streaming service or begin recording to your desktop, depending on the profile you chose earlier. Hope you guys liked this first entry into my slightly late Saturday general guide day. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below and feel free to request any guides you might want either by commenting or emailing me at requests at As always people, keep on derping.